Comics, the world famous Arch City Comics. This is CG Jumpstart Between the Panels. I am your host, Adam AF. Joining me as always, we've got the number one promoter in Comics Gate, Mr. Tinfoil Hat Nick. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the show. And our esteemed guest of honor tonight is the one and only, the cover artist for CG Jumpstart, the man behind Sovereign and the variant cover to Graveyard Shift Volume 2, Mr. Andrew Huerta. What up, what up? How's everybody doing? Very good. Very good to have you here, man. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm glad to be here, man. Sorry for being a little late, but, you know, life gets in the way sometimes. That's all right. We are never on time around here. Late and gay is the work campaign way. Late and gay. Got it. (laughs) Hail to the chat. Uh, We've got Wilberforce Wooster hanging with us. The real Steve Dye, of course, is in the chat, making sure we don't spoil too much of anything. Only 64, we got Simon Simpotier, my man, dropping links. Thank you very much. Uh, Cider Hype, I know uh, the Fugitive Pan Boy is listening on his way to wrestling. So we got him hanging out in the shadows. Edwin the Ace, always good to see you around, man. Hail. Hail to everybody else. Thank you guys for joining us. Before we get into the thick of it, we wanted to bring something uh, to everybody's attention here that you may or may not have seen floating around on Twitter today. But something really terrible happened to some of our fellow CGers. Uh, the Grim Reaper team, uh, they survived a terrible fire, but unfortunately everything that they own other than the clothes on their back was taken. So the man here, Mr. Nick, set up a wonderful GoFundMe. And if you have any kind of dollars to spare, please consider donating five, 10, 20 bucks, whatever, to this GoFundMe, help these guys out because they really lost everything. And these guys are two of the coolest people that I've met in this movement. They're very down to earth. Uh, The Grim Reaper was an amazing book. And unfortunately, they lost all of the progress on book two. So they have got to start all over again. And they have nothing to start with because they lost everything. Uh, Nick, would you like to say a little bit about this here? Yeah. Um, so here's the deal. This is um, I just I set this up this morning just because um, I saw what was going on on um, on the Twitterverse. And I was like, whoa, because I've had these people on my show twice and on my Sunday morning show or Sunday afternoon show. I'm sorry. And they are, like you said, without a doubt, the nicest people um, I have ever met. They just want to make good comic books. I mean, they're, uh, the Grim Reaper was my number two comic book to come out of CG in 2019. As far as I, as far as like my opinion is concerned and they have lost everything. Carla was in the house when the fire started. She told me that the smoke, it got real smoky and the fire spread so fast. She just had enough time to get out the door with the clothes on her back and her phone. They were 90% done with Grim Reaper two. All of that is gone. Uh, she has lost her laptop or walk home. They have lost all their clothes. They have no food. They have no bed. They have no place to sit. They have nothing. So even if you can't, um, cause I understand that we just had Christmas and new years and people are broke right now. But if, even if you can't give money, that is okay. Spreading the word helps just as much as giving a monetary thing. Also, um, if you are a religious person and whatever God you pray to, please offer up prayers and um, thoughts for them uh, because they are definitely going to need this. This is just a like this thousand dollar goal is just a drop in the bucket to what they're going to need. These, these are going to need some long term, long term support. And this is where Comic Skate always shows up, though. This is where it always happens. Whenever one of us is in trouble, we all go to help. So just do what you can to help these people. I really, really appreciate it. And all this money is going directly to them. I'm not touching any of it. It is going directly to them. You, you do it, and then it gets cashed out to them um, once we hit the funding, and then when we get to some other things. So it's going to them. Yeah, I'd like to reiterate what Nick said. This is definitely what's this is one of those things that sets Comics Gate apart from just the indie comic scene. Is that when something like this does happen, we do all step up and show our support. You know, you might not have backed Grim Reaper, uh, but I guarantee you heard of it. You have probably seen Carla and John, you know, in the Twitter sphere somewhere. Uh, you've seen them on stream somewhere. 
they are fellow creators. They're so down to earth, very cool people. I, it's just an absolute travesty that this happened to them. Uh, so like you said, anything, you know, five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, it doesn't matter. If you can't right now, share it out there just to get some other people's eyes on it who maybe can donate something. Um, and like you said, every little bit helps. We did set it at a very low goal, thousand dollars, because we don't want, we're not trying to ask for a lot, but this will at least get them food. It will get them clothes, toothbrushes, you know, the things that you were taking for granted right now, they need. So please show your support for our fellow brothers and sisters here. And, and please do what you can. Uh, Sim, drop the link in the chat. It's also in the description. Um, so like we said, share it out, donate, please. Anything at all will help. Sorry to start this on such a downer note, but we wanted to get this out there. We wanted to draw people's attention to this uh, because these are two people, two fellow comic skaters who are truly, truly in need right now. Yeah, absolutely. And every I do want to say a, um, a big thank you to everybody who has donated and who has shared this. Um, you guys stepped up in a big, big way. And I'm so very proud to be a part of this. I mean, this is what makes this is what makes me get up in the morning with a smile on my face, because I know that I'm a very small cog in this big wheel that is comic skate. Um, you know, it, I've said I said this. I think, Andrew, you were in a, a chat that I was in where I said this one time. It was like, I hope that the guys who when they first started image and told the big two to go screw themselves, this is what they felt like when they woke up in the morning, just oh, I'm ready to go and all, you know, excited and everything. And this kind of stuff just reaffirms uh, my love and my passion and my wanting for comic skate. This is, you know, when everybody steps up and does and helps out when, you know, they don't have to, or maybe they don't have all the money to do it, but I'm telling you, man, $5, $10, whatever you can spare, if you can spare it, because we're not trying to put you in any kind of a uh, situation where, you know, you can't pay your bills, but if you can give, if you can't share. Exactly. Exactly. So yes, please keep that uh, in consideration. Please keep them in your prayers, your thoughts, you know, whatever it is you do, because um, they are definitely in need of all the help they can get, whether it be monetary support or just, just support, you know, um, they'll probably be off the grid for a while, you know, having to deal with all of this. Uh, their first book is still in demand. You can order it. I'm not sure how quickly you will get it because of all this going on. I'm sure that's not the, the you know, the first thing on their priority list at this time, uh, but it is still available. So if you want to still back their book, I highly recommend it. It was a great book. Um, Carl is a fantastic artist. It's a fantastic story from John. I, I can't wait to see what else these two uh, can bring us. So let's help them out. Let's do what we can. So onward with the show. So this is CG Jumpstart between the panels. Uh, if you've been living under a rock and you don't know what CG Jumpstart is about, well, it is an upcoming magazine that Mr. Gathanzo is putting together uh, with the help of Steve Dye, the editor, filled with the best and brightest talent Comicsgate has to offer. It is chock full of previews of upcoming campaigns, short stories. Uh, we're it's going to have serials in it, uh, meaning you know, as the book as the magazine goes on, you're going to get you know snippets of uh, a larger story. Um, it's also going to have interviews. It's going to have top 10 lists. Basically, everything that you love from Wizard Magazine combined with Shonen Jump and a little bit of Heavy Metal Magazine as well, all rolled up into one beautiful 120-page magazine. And the cover is this gorgeous, gorgeous piece by our man who's here today, Mr. Andrew Huerta. We'll bring that cover up because... I just, I don't get tired of looking at it. It's just so damn beautiful. Huerta, you're a master. You know that? You're a master. I'm trying. I'm trying. So, uh, you know, what, what got you started uh, in comics, period? You know, um, what's your background? Did it, Who taught you uh, how to draw like this? 
Or what did you draw um, inspiration from? Might be a better question. Well, I've, well, I'm, I'm a product of the 80s. So uh, at that time, you know, there was a bunch of like uh, cartoons that were just cool. Like, uh, I remember there was a RoboCop cartoon. Mm -hmm. There was like a, that, that old X-Men Pride cartoon. There was Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. um, oh, man, there was just so many. I can't, like the Thundercats, Voltron. I can go on. Oh, like, yes. we were just... <laughs> It yes. was just like Keep this, speaking this, my language, my friend. <laughs> yeah, man. Like everything's a remake. But what's what's kind of crazy is that like everything today is a remake of what I grew up on. And, and they're bad. That, yeah, and but th th that's what's sad. It's a remake. Like there's really nothing original. Like everything that we grew up with was completely original. Mm -hmm. And and we were just like our minds were blown. I was just this kid. It's like what the fuck is all this stuff on? on TV. I was just like hooked on it. I just loved it. And uh, some stuff like I remember like the original Mortal Kombat game. The I remember liking the um, I'm not sure if the art was on the arcade uh, box or whatever or the arcade uh, thing, but the instruction manual had like this crazy stuff like artist, this art style. And I was like, oh, Scorpion looks dope. Uh, Sub Zero looks dope. Raiden looks dope, and I wanted to draw those things. So I would just literally copy, you know, Ninja Turtles, the mortal, the art in the Mortal Kombat game. I would copy Ren and Stimpy. I just would copy everything that I liked, and and I don't know. I just drew. Like everybody drew, but for some reason I was like the best in my class. So I guess that reinforcement, that positive. Everybody like on my ass, like, oh, you're so good. You know, like it just that made me want to draw more and more and more because I kept getting love for it. And um, eventually, you know, when the 90s come around, uh, I don't know how I saw my first comic book, but maybe it was at the supermarket. Maybe it was at Toys R Us. I don't remember. But I saw like that X-Men, that Wolverine cover where it's like the. It's like he clawed the cover, like he clawed off the, the Yeah, of I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and I'm like, that shit tripped me out because, you know, I'm thinking these are just comic books, whatever. But when you see, like, when you're a kid, your imagination goes places. So I'm like, is Wolverine real? Yeah. <laughs> so I was just like, what? This is crazy. Like, he clawed the cover? Like, what the fuck is this? So, like, I got it. And at first I didn't get it, but then I, like, obviously I put it together. Like, it was just for the cover. It was like a gimmick. But it just takes you to another place. That's what cool about being a kid. Like that's how kids get into things, hooked on things. They just they make things seem like grand, like bigger than what they are. You know what I mean? Like like when you look at your dad, you look at him as like the baddest man on earth or something. And when you see like Michael Jordan, he's like the greatest basketball. He's a god on the on on the court. You know what I mean? Like everything's like amplified. So comic books to kids are like just ridiculous crazy stories and you and that's how we become comic fans um so that wolverine cover got me hooked and then from there i think i got into like uh spawn and when i discovered spawn and then you know i, I went back and started looking for like other todd mcfarland's work like spider-man that uh also that issue of spider-man joining the x-force fighting juggernaut mm -hmm. um all that art, like I was just definitely hooked by the visuals of comic books, not so much the stories and stuff, but it was just taking me to, it was just an uh, escape, escapism, and it just took me somewhere else. And since I already liked drawing, I just started copying that stuff. So it's like, it was a perfect fit for me. And then I just, be and then I started reading this, started collecting them. I started like, I got hooked every Wednesday, you had to go back. Um, and it just became like a ritual. And I just kept drawing, dude. I just kept drawing. And and I got better. I just got better and better. Everybody else stopped drawing, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, ninth grade. People are getting into girls, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is. I still, I mean, I like girls too, but just I would draw on the side. You know what I mean, like I would still draw, draw, draw. And I didn't know what I was going to be. You know, I didn't know you can make money in comic books. I didn't, you know, you don't know anything. There was no internet back then. So you're just whatever. Um, so I just, someone would ask me, what are you going to do? I don't know, I'll be a DJ or something. I have no idea, you know? 
Um, and then uh, I just got better. I just got in high school, like I, I leveled up. People, I could see the difference. And then I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to take this seriously because I'm getting good. And people are starting to ask me for like, like, oh, can I, can you draw a portrait? Can you draw me or whatever for money? So and you start getting commissions. You're like, oh, wait, I can make a dime off of this. Right. Yeah, man. And my, I remember my first commission was like 20 bucks. And I was like, I'm getting paid to draw. And I was like tripping out. I was like, wow, this is crazy, dude. Um, and it was shitty. Even for back, it, I mean, it was just, yeah, I was like young and everything, but it's just crazy. Someone's paying me to, you know, to draw this picture. And then the internet uh, was, you know, um, at the time, that's when the internet started blowing up a little bit. It was like MySpace, DeviantArt. And once I found those two things, like DeviantArt and uh, comic book forums, it just blew up. I, I knew like I could do this for a living or, or at least try to. And, um, and being a competitive person, I saw these other artists on these forums in DeviantArt and I'm like, fuck, like I thought I was good. I was good in regular school, but in comic forums and on DeviantArt, I was not like, I was not anything. I was, I was like, whatever. I was kind of sucky. So, uh, it yeah, you, you get into that bigger pond, you know, you're the high school basketball star and then you go to college yeah. and you're like, shit, I suck. Yep. Yeah, man. And again, like I'm one of those types. There's, there's, there's like two types of people, you know, like there's the, those that just quit when things get hard. And there's those that just like, nah, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to just get better and just beat this thing or, or just overcome this obstacle. And that's what happened. I mean, I saw like, Dude, on this, I was on Pencil Jack. So if anybody knows, Pencil Jack was like the comic, for, the drawing comic forum for comics in, in the industry. It had Robert Kirkman was on that board. Liefeld was on that board. Carrie Randolph, Travel Foreman. Um, who's the guy that, Terry Moore? The guy that draws Walking Dead? Mm, yeah. Uh, Terry, yeah. Terry Moore was the original artist. And then right, I think him. it changed over to right. somebody else. Cliff yeah, Rathburn. Terry, yeah, Terry Moore was on that site. Uh, Nate Belgard. I'm talking like beasts, like badass dudes coming up. Um, I was like, fuck, these guys are all better than me. And and it just I just had to get better than them. I had to. Like I would just post like every as much as I could. I would draw, scan, and then I would it would it was like crack. Like I would draw something. <laughs> scan it get feedback like that first couple comments and it just felt good it felt it was like crack and then i just kept doing it and doing it and doing it and before you know i was one of the better artists on the site and then uh i just took it seriously and then i just started getting a bunch of commissions started getting gigs from like uh dynamite uh boom uh Archaea, uh idw all that shit. and that's pretty much how the whole drawing thing took off or how my journey basically went. Very cool. Very cool. We got uh, the riding Cardinal in the chat. Hail brother. He says, uh, yo, I was on pencil Jack and also lead heavy and the Artzilla forums. Yeah, I was on those two, man. Yeah, man. Artzilla was a good one. Artzilla had like the four top dudes on that site. It was LaShawn Thomas, Ed McGinnis, uh, Karen Grant and Sanford green. And, and Scotty young. And those those guys were like the leaders of that site. And when I found that site, I was like, oh, these dudes have style, like crazy style. And um, I got hooked on them. I already knew Ed McGinnis from comic books, but the other guys I'd never heard of. But they were all like, they had like this street art vibe to them. And um, yeah, I was just, I was, posting on, I was posting on everything, dude. It was like, like once you find this, that you could, I could be, I could actually, because it sucks with normies like they, they don't know shit about comic books they don't care about art they care about nothing but uh whatever's going on in you know movies or just sports or just kind of mainstream shit right um and i would have to fake it i would have to like watch some sports or do this and do that to kind of maintain conversations because you know i can't talk about comic books with them but um yeah so once you find this little corner of, of nerds and comic book people, it's like it just it just got addictive, and uh, you just want to keep going in there. That's awesome. Now you mentioned uh, you mentioned street art there. 
Uh, you've got a very graffiti style to your artwork from what I've seen. And Nick, Nick said this one time when we were talking about Sovereign, that your art has a crackle that you can actually like hear your artwork. Oh yeah. Crack. Dude. Yeah. The way, <laughs> the way that you do um, like there's this, there's one piece, there's one, uh, there's one piece that you have on your um, on the Sovereign page where you've got those giant uh, energy plasma eddies going up in the, uh, up on the main baddies uh, face and in his like little temple or whatever. And Sovereign's just standing in front of him. And I swear to God, every time I look at that, I can hear the sound of that plasma just going that when the crackle and everything like that. And you were one of the very, very few people who I've ever seen be able to visually represent sound with your art and everything that and stuff like that. I mean, that is a very rare talent and it is hard to do and you pull it off perfectly. Well, thank you, man. Um, I think a lot of that comes from my love of, of like music. I love music, but specifically rap and hip hop. Mm -hmm. um, but now, you know, when you get older, you love all kinds of music. If it's good, it's good. But I do like, I'm very, um, I just like, I can draw anywhere. I can do, I can do it. I can draw with anything like crayons, whatever. But if I really want to do sovereign the right way, if I really want to go off on a piece, like let's say that graveyard chip cover, um, I need to have my shit together. I need to have my, my music playing the, a certain song. I need to have, I need to be in the right mood. Like I have to, it's, it's, it's weird. Like I have to really put this, all this energy in this, like, uh, all my soul into this piece. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's why I'm slow. I think because I want to put all this shit in there and it has to be exact. Like I could draw a comic book in five days, but it would look like every, uh, everybody else's comic book. You know what I mean? Um, it would just be generic art. And there's, to me, in my opinion, there's already enough of that. That exists. There's a hundred comic books out there that look, all look the same. Yeah, there's two companies that trade in it constantly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, even, it's even worse now. I mean, I, uh, uh, Image has fallen into that trap. Boom. Like All these guys are just, they're all basically, you know, eating off of each other now. They're not even trying to outdo the other. Yeah, don't even yeah, get me yeah. started about like IDW, man. That just we'll talk about Transformers and that'll just make oh, me. Oh yeah, mad. we'll get into it. We'll get into it. But mm -hmm. like so so I'm really like and this is again, this is just how I work. This is me, but I put a lot of thought and effort. I'm not saying other people don't do that, but I really do it. And um like dude, this is an example. Okay, so last night I'm working on sovereign layouts, right? And and the layouts is where all the magic happens. So that's where I have to know how many panels this page is going to have. Um, what angle is this shot going to be in? How Now, what kind of energy can I put into this shot and the next shot? All this stuff. And does it flow, you know? And the pacing. So all that shit has to be worked on in the layouts. I literally, I literally spent about like an hour and a half on just figuring out one panel. <laughs> And that wasn't even drawing the panel. That's just the layout. So See, I don't find like, it. Go ahead. No, keep going. No, so when people are like, yo, man, you're late, seven months, whatever, like, yeah, I'm late. And I'm and other things happen. That's those are whatever reasons, my back and the new baby, shit like that happened. But like that's a that's something I didn't worry about when I was doing mainstream comic books, like when I worked with IDW Dynamite, whatever. Someone gave me a script. I didn't really give a shit about the characters or the story because I'm just a, I'm just a, you know, I'm just You're a hired date. gun at that point. Yeah, I'm a hired gun and they need it by like, you know, they have a date that they need it by. And I would say I don't care. I don't care about this book. I just want the money and I'm glad for the opportunity to get another name, another book under my name. So I would just draw shit. I wouldn't even like, I wouldn't even lay it out. Like sometimes I would even draw on eight by 11 paper. Like, they had no idea what I was doing. I would just draw it, poop it out, <laughs> here you go, and just, I didn't care. And it's not my best work. That's why I don't really talk about some of my work, because it's just, I know I, I like, have asked it. But with Sovereign, it's like, it's really a passion project. 
like literally like i spent an hour and a half on just a layout on a panel i shouldn't but i am <laughs> and it's like i want to get this shit right like this one shot right you know what i mean and it's like and then i move on to the next one to the next one and then and then and then that energy I, uh, the the next thing is just to um maintain that energy into the uh, final pencils or inks whatever and because i want my book to be the most energetic i don't know if it is but that's the goal i want it to be the most alive out of everything out there you know from what i've seen so far i think you're gonna take that title and it's you're nobody's gonna be able to touch you i, I mean the preview pages that you've got up for sovereign are just they're mind-numbing man i mean you know yeah people might bitch that it's late but first this is your first campaign like you said you had a bunch of other stuff you know come up and life happens we get that too but my my thing is it's late because you are putting your all into it so when i get this book it's going to be stunning you know like yep. you said every 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 book in cg that i've backed so far has been so and so's passion project because i know that's where the quality is going to come from you should Maybe you shouldn't spend an hour and a half on a single panel layout, but when you <laughs> do spend an hour and a half on a single panel layout, that shows, man, yeah. mm -hmm. that, yeah. that, 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 you know, you can, that reverberates with the reader when that product is finally in that person's hands. I mean, all these books I've gotten, I, you know, I don't buzz through them in five, 10 minutes. Like I, like I used to buzz through my big two comic books. I sit there and I absorb these pages because I know, like you said, that it's you put everything into it. So I want to suck everything out of it that you put into it. And that's another yeah. th a distinction between CG and indie in the mainstream is that you guys are all putting everything into these books so we can get the best out of them. And that is what separates us from the pack. Yeah, I think uh, Canales put it the best when he told me that uh, CG books are artisanal books. These are like if um, the big two are your box wine, this stuff is, you know, the real CG is like the really good stuff. Like, some, yeah, you know, it's, your, it's your aged wine, you know, yeah. it's the expensive no, stuff. Marvel and DC is like, um, what is it? Like Colt 45 or something. Mm, <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> no. they're, not, they're not even box wine. <laughs> no, but, I don't know, man. But well, yeah, I guess you could be like Boone's Farm or Wild Irish Rose or something like that. Gas station wine, we'll call it that. Right, right. No, but like, um, I'm, I'm thinking about it, and I hate comparing it to movies because that's what that's what the mainstream is doing. They're basically making movies to be adapted into. I mean, they're making comic books to be adapted. Mm -hmm. into but um, I'm 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 kind of treating my comic like a like a like if I'm build like I'm literally making an anime or some kind of movie. Cause I'm doing, I'm going over each shot like crazy. And if something doesn't work, I have to go back and redo it. Like, like take one, take two. That's kind of how I feel. And, um, and I have to make sense of the, 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 the fight scenes. And I don't know. It's crazy. Do like, this is the first time I've done my own book. And because it's mine, I care way more. And it's probably not a good idea that I'm spending that much time, but Again, I, I I don't know, man. I'm just I just want to make the best shit. Personally, for me, I can't live. It would it would bother me forever if I just turned in issue one and I wasn't happy with it. It would, I would like, I'd probably kill myself. Like I don't know what would happen. Like it would just bother me a lot. Like like I hated it when when a a book like when I worked on Dynamite or whatever whatever company. And and I finally see the my artwork in these um, in the comic shops, you know, if, when I pick up a copy, and I would see a panel where I'm like, oh fuck, look how lazy that looks, and that even that bothered me, and I didn't even like care for that that story of those characters. So I can't imagine doing that with Sovereign. So it's like I have to make this my you know my I guess this is like my Watchmen or whatever. This is my my shit that I have to that represents who I am. Like this is my stuff, mm -hmm. and if I just half-ass it, people are gonna be like, "Oh, this is just what Andrew is." It just kind of half-asses it. So um, yeah, it's it's personal. It's personal for sure. 
And I, everybody, I think, at CG can uh, pretty much agree on the fact that we will take quality over quantity any day. Because if something, you know, like I am one of your biggest fans. You don't know that, but I am. Well, you know it now. But, like, <laughs> I love, like I said before, I love how you put sound in the stuff. I love the way you draw. I love that it has this hip-hop flair to it. I love. I mean, because, like, I can see it. Um, depending on which coast you grew up on and who invented hip hop first, both things had one thing in common, whether you're in that uh, the bottom of those buildings in um, in Queens and the Bronx or you're out in the streets in L.A. Everybody had a tagging crew that rolled around with these hip hop groups that they would tag while they while they spun and uh, rap and lay down everything like that. And this is all part of it, man. And I love it. It's just so it's so alive. It's so different. And that's another thing that I think separates Comiscape from everything else. You go and try to find this level of creativity and just blat out. You're not going to find it anywhere else. Oh no, yeah. Not it's at a, all. Oh, it's a, that's a fact. That's a fact. That's the reason why you know, you never saw me on Marvel or DC because my style was too. look. I just, I just came up at the worst time. The worst time. If I was um, old enough, if I was in my prime in the 90s, I'd probably be a millionaire. Maybe. I'm not sure. Me and some other artists talked about this before. Before CG started, we were like, dude, we were born in the wrong era. Mm -hmm. um, I probably would be like rich because my style would have been embraced. Uh, Hip hop in the 90s was huge. Uh anime in the 90s was freaking crazy like you know mm -hmm. you had the the akiras the evangelians the, the vampire mm -hmm. hunter d's the guyvers all that shit so um it would have been highly accepted my, my my art um but i happen to have been in my prime during this weird woke bland sterile comic book tumblr art era where it's like my shit is just it's not cute it's not it's, it doesn't fit into their to their culture. It doesn't fit into their how they see the world. It's that they Kelly like Arts crap, man. Whoever let that school of thought come in should be flogged merciless, mercilessly in the streets. In my <laughs> opinion. I mean, that is the as far as I'm concerned, that is one of the downfalls of Western civilization, like some people say SpongeBob is. I mean, <laughs> because it is just, I mean, it's trash. It's these round little roly poly things that have no form, no creativity to them. It's basically like somebody took a bunch of, um, you remember, uh, what was it back in the sixties, Han Hanna Barbera used to have this cartoon. Um, I think it was like the inhumans or something like that, where two of the things were like these little blob things. And they didn't even like, they didn't even make, they didn't even talk. They were like, oh, blah, 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 blah. that's what they sounded like. And, yeah. you know, that's what these Cal art things remind me of. It's just, the, you know, what they did to Thundercats should not have ever been allowed. Um, the stuff that they let creep into she should not have been allowed. Um, you know, it, it, it's just, oh, there's people drive me nuts. And to see something like this is so refreshing because it does take me back. You know, this style, when... Uh, Dreamwave first launch, man, uh, 2003, when they got to reboot Transformers, if this was in there, it would have made it even better than what it already was. Um, you know, Tina, I, I like, who was it? Um, I've always said that the two easiest uh, books in comics, Kate, to do a crossover would be Sovereign and Cyberfrog because of how the stories are set up and who Sovereign is and what happens in Cyberfrog that we've seen so far. That would be so dope to see. I would go nuts. You would literally see me explode probably. But <laughs> I mean, that's, but that's just how, you know, it, it, the, both of those styles and I've seen you draw cyber frog and I would love yeah. to see you guys like switch off. Um, like you, he draws sovereign and you draw cyber frog. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that I miss in comics is when, um, like you would have one guy say, well, let me have a shot at your Batman or let me have a shot at right. your Superman. You know, you don't do that anymore because nobody can really do that because it all looks the same. But man, the stuff. Oh, so they, good. Not, not only can they, they can't do that anymore because of you said the styles, but they can't do it anymore because it's it, it almost feels more uh, corporate now. Yes. Like like because I do spawn spawn versus or whatever it was. Batman, that comic book was dope. Mm -hmm. I, I love that comic. And or when he started yeah. doing Spawn through the deck or through like history and stuff, like a medieval Spawn, Dark Ages Spawn, and all that stuff, man. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like all that shit was dope, but I feel like you can't. None of that stuff exists anymore. It's kind of sad. Like all the fun has been sucked out. Yeah, because it's, it's all it's, just, it's all propaganda now, man. They yeah, all just put political. Up, yes, it's all political. It's so corporate now. It's like it's it's it doesn't even feel like comic books anymore. It just feels like they're just they're just they just they just feel like ideas concepts pitches for the movies for cartoons whatever like it just doesn't feel like comic books yeah and, that's um and that's again that's what you know that's what cg is trying to do we're trying to bring back that that feeling those vibes that hype that fun that the, the crossovers i know there's a crossover coming up with uh mail it with the uh, jawbreakers graveyard shift and cyber frog mm. um that's gonna be crazy mm -hmm. uh, that might break. I, that might break the internet. Yeah, and um, it, it's possible that, like, again, I mean, I don't think this is spoilers or anything, but it's possible that Brutus and Sovereign can get together because um, the way I have it set up with Sovereign, if you know, people want to know a little more, um, Sovereign is my answer. If if anybody has read Invincible, um, I'm kind of. Uh, it has no, it's nothing like invincible, but when it comes to like how the 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 story goes, kind of like how the um the, the structure of invincible because invincible was one book, but it it basically showed off an entire invincible universe mm -hmm. in this one. Yeah, book. yeah. So one issue would be about invincible, and then the next issue would be about maybe Eve, and then maybe a different issue would be about the uh, garden guardians of the globe, whatever they're called. Um, mm -hmm. All these different things and you'd be like oh shit, this is a giant world bunch of cool characters i love it like people invincible was literally the last great superhero comic book um and i really want to do that with sovereign that's the goal with sovereign um i want sovereign you know that's obviously the title it's about sovereign but obviously i don't have the, the money or the manpower to do 50 books so i'm gonna do my best to in uh to kind of showcase and go off in different directions in Sovereign. So I'm hoping, you know, uh, I can do one issue that's kind of like a, a one-off story where we get to, you know, we meet a new character uh, from this universe and, or, uh, you know, other characters team up with uh, Sovereign and things like that. Because I want Sovereign to be my answer to the Marvel and DC universe. Because that's missing. Marvel has marvel characters in their universe that's it dc has dc universe and their characters and that's it image used to have a universe but it doesn't no more it doesn't exist mm -mm. they're just they're just this indie company now they just do weird books now there's no uh there's no universe there's no cohesiveness there and 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 superhero i know i know superhero uh fans and readers because i am one and we love universes we love that shit. We love it when like Robocop meets up with Terminator or whatever. Like we love that stuff. Um, so I want, ter uh, uh, not Terminator. <laughs> I want Sovereign to uh, meet up with other characters that I've created. And I put so much effort into these characters. I'm not kidding, dude. I want, I'm almost trying to, I'm trying to almost outdo Kirby. Like each character that I've made could literally be its own comic book. No joke. It's not even like, oh, this is just Plant Man meets Fire Man or some bullshit. It's like I put a lot of love and effort into their designs, their backstory to where if 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 like let's say by Sovereign Volume 3, Issue 3, whatever, and let's say the community is like, dude, I love Aztec or whatever, or Law 1. I have a character called Law 1 that no one knows about. Um they would be like, oh, I want to see him. And I could be like, okay, then I'll take a break from Sovereign, from the main story, and I'll just maybe do a campaign with just this one shot of this guy. And I could do that. I literally have like, I don't know if I have hundreds, but I'm hot. like, I have like dozens of characters that I know people would like dig in Sovereign. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my answer to DC and Marvel. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, like I have a, I have questions about your um, the main baddie in Sovereign, but I can't ask them online or on over the air because it might give away something. So we'll just let that keep going. <laughs> but yeah, but it's like I know what you're saying about like you know if fans have because um, like 
Uh, it goes back to my Cyber Frog Sovereign crossover with him being the guy who created the Viz to come to Earth in Cyber Frog. Maybe he's the same guy who's in uh, um, Sovereign and he's tried this before. I mean, like I've literally taken both of these care, both of those books in a crossover and gone all the way because I just love it so much because right. I think your characters are so dy- uh, like with Cyber Frog, it's so dynamic. But with your characters in particular, they're just. Oh, they're so dynamic and they're so in your face. And it's, I can see where you're coming from. Like you've got all of these characters that can be their own self-contained stories and comic books within this one self-contained story and comic book. And that is awesome because that just means that you have so much stuff and source material to pull for that. You can literally do this forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to dude. Um, Like, yeah, man, I'm telling you, like, I feel like Marvel and DC have no idea what they're doing anymore. Like, no, they don't care. That's they don't care. Problem. And, well, they have a couple things. They 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 do care, but they care about the wrong things. Mm-hmm. Well, Fiaggy has said that the comic books are now just lead-ins to uh, the movies. They're just going right. to point to that. That's All right. of the That's other canon lore and everything that we've grown up with and loved, it no longer really matters and exists anymore. They're just going to make them um, for the movies. And, you know, yeah. that makes comics basically the minor leagues. And I've never... Never until this point in time in history has it ever been that the comics were the minor leagues for the movies. It was always the movies were the minor leagues for the comics. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. That's crazy, man. Weird times. Weird yeah. times, man. And it's yeah. and, and we wouldn't exist without those weird times. That's the funny part. Well, that's you know, that's if, a very good point, actually. Yeah, they yeah. created their own if they worst were to enemy. Just hire me, like, if they just hired me, if they just you know, left John Malin's art alone. If they just didn't talk about politics, just talk about comic books. If they just didn't like, if they weren't rude to customers, like dude, like if all you had to do was keep your mouth shut and make dope comic books, that's it. Mm-hmm. But they couldn't do that. They couldn't do it. Well, they, because had, too much. To, like, they had the virtue signal. Well, you know, I, that's the, that's the, the era that we live in now. You know, you got to, you gotta fly that virtue flag. I think they have is- to, yeah, like like you said, they have to virtue signal and they have to they couldn't hire the best artists for this comic book. They had to get their friends. Mm-hmm. Their friends that, that could barely draw, their friends that could barely write, and then the result is just crappy comic books. It's definitely this. De- I think uh, it's definitely a big symptom of what happens when you start letting people um who were raised on participation trophies start running things because they mm-hmm. believe in just showing up is enough. And it's not about the talent the drive, the, um, the imagination, the love or anything like that. It's just about showing up. And so if you can talk to talk and walk and, but you can't walk the walk, it doesn't matter because you're still there. It's all about numbers. Again, it, they are going in the reverse of what it should be. They're doing quantity over quality and it shows. Yeah. I mean, their stuff is garbage. Like, like I was talking about Dreamwave earlier with Transformers. Like, Dreamwave Transformers was beautiful. Um, I remember. Yeah, like, I loved Marvel's stuff with Transformers. Like, I thought, like, Simon Furman is still probably one of my favorite writers out there. Um, and he, he did a Transformers UK and everything like that. But when it comes to art, when they redid the Transformer universe in Dreamwave with Jim Lee and all those guys over there doing that, man, the story was good and it gave a different feel to what we grew up with with Transformers. But it was all about that dope art because for the first time we weren't seeing um, it was a it was an amalgamation of an American take on a Japanese show put in comics, but drawn in a more of an anime style and what these bots should look like and like everybody started going crazy and being creative. Like all of a sudden you had Megatron as a tank and just a, and a like multi barreled badass tank, that type of deal. And um, you know, everything was, uh, was very fluid and everything. And now everything looks like Bayformers. They all look the same. There is no creativity. That's why this stuff doesn't sell. And then what they did to GI Joe's comics is just, a sacrilege in and of itself. Like I cover that had that weirdo Destro on it. And then, I saw a cover that came out not too long ago where the legs didn't even match the body frame of the rest of the person. And it was turned in an awkward direction. And this was a cover. 
this was something that was sold as like a finished cover. And I was just like, what are y'all doing over there, man? They're a fight. They're, 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 they're on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they're doing. They're on Twitter, dude. Like if, if you see a time, if I see a timeline that always complains about Trump or politics, I'm like, you don't give a shit about comic books. You don't, you don't. That's where you, that, if, if, if you see my timeline and if it's all about like burritos or something, then that's all I care about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? I don't care about comic books. I care about burritos. But if you see these editors and all these artists complaining about Trump and all this stuff, and it's like, dude, like, where's your heart at? Like, who cares? You're a comic artist. If you really want to fight politics and fight, you know, for, for policies and shit like that, then become a politician or become an activist. Quit comic books. You know what I mean? Like that's not how it works. Like if I go to if I go on a UFC's timeline, it's about the fighters. It's about all that shit. It's about the drama in the in in the MMA. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I get nothing of politics in there. That's one reason why I love, you know, sports and shit. It's you know, I think it's still good, but kind of, but like they keep that shit about sports and stuff. It's not mm -hmm. it hasn't been really corrupted yet. But there's no reason for comic books to be so political. I mean, these are super especially Marvel and DC. Now, if it was a company called like political comic books, then obviously, yeah, go ham. Talk, <laughs> about, talk about Trump and Elizabeth Warren and whatever you want to do. Do it. But this is, dude, you should, they should be talking about how Doom can, you know, can fuck up Captain America, whatever. Like, just give me some shit to be excited about. Hype me up about these characters. And that's one thing they, they forgot to do. That, that, that's why Stan, Stan Lee was the reason why Marvel is what it is. Mm -hmm. He is the only reason. Because he, I didn't even know who he was. He was just this old white dude who was everywhere. He was everywhere. He was like in the beginning of a cartoon, of the Iron Man cartoon back in the day, the Fantastic Four, X-Men, whatever. I would always see his ass talking about, you know, hey, what's up, believers and all that shit. And I'm like, oh, Stan Lee. <laughs> and I would see his face on the comic cards. I'm like, oh, he's on the comic cards. Like, just his presence got me hyped and he knew how to sell this stuff. He knew how to get me excited. Cause I was just, you know, I wasn't exactly like the traditional comic book reader. I was into the art only, but because of his excitement and his energy, I, I think that maintained my, my presence in the industry or just in the fandom, you know? And that was the last guy to do that stuff. Um, the closest you can have now or back then in the 90s was maybe Todd McFarlane, Liefeld. The image guys were like the closest thing to Stanley mm -hmm. because Todd McFarlane was everywhere, too. You know, I would see him. He had his HBO Spawn cartoon. He would um, he'd always do conventions. He'd always be like uh, doing it. He was always hyping Spawn and hyping uh, image in general. So I felt like he was like the second coming, the, the next guy. And then again, no one. No one else has been able to do that. And then you have Ethan Van Sky. And no matter what people say about him, that dude, that dude is, is all hype. That's all he does. Mm -hmm. he, he can sell you a rock. Mm -hmm. You know, he'd be, look at this rock. Isn't it beautiful? Like, he would just say shit. And people would be like, okay, I'm in it. I, I'm into it. I'll buy this rock. And it's like, that's what comic books need bad right now. Big time. Because no one even knows they fucking exist. I'll be drawing outside and some people will be like, comic books exist? I'm like, fuck, yeah, dude. And what, people, and what people don't really understand is that there's been a form of comic book around for like 5,000 years. This is one of uh, putting, a, putting pictures with words on paper or something like papyrus, stone, mud clay tablets is one of the oldest forms of communication out there and you know it, it still blows my mind that people are like comics still exist because everybody thought everything went digital but you know yeah. it, it, there's still people out there who who um who crave um you know that book in their hand and the fill yeah. of that paper fuck between digital, the man. um you know oh no yeah fuck it dude I, i've tried like i do have a bunch of digital comics but it's not the same no, no, it's not. not it's absolutely close. not. I understand that. I mean, it's like I've got um I've got the very first comic I ever used my own money to buy. And it's um 
it's about 30 some odd years old and i love to open it up because the smell of that newsprint as it ages man just brings you back to that moment you bought it off the uh, i bought it off the spinner rack you know i can that's one of the most vivid memories that i have because every time i open up that book i remember like it was in a uh, food line um in mid hill north carolina and um you know i can remember i can kind of remember what i was even wearing the memory so strong I mean, it's just one of those things. Uh, there is some, a comment in the chat that I would like to uh, to address, uh, and it says, uh, "Our city, there were politics and comics since the creation of, comic, of the comic books." I think Stan Lee said it the best. Yes, there have always been politics, but they have been so um, it has been it's like been so toned down. And the reason being is because you don't ever want to beat your reader over the head with the politics. And that's where the problem is with modern politics is they sit there and they knock you to death with politics all the time. Yeah. You're, you're bludgeoned in the face by them nowadays. Well, there is a mean, big difference between yeah. the politics of, of days of yore and what we get now. Well, think about it with Stanley. Like when he introduced Black Panther back in the '60s, okay, that was a big thing. That was a huge step because we've got a we've got a uh, African American uh, comic book character. But he let the readers get there. You know what I'm saying? They got to make their own decisions. He wasn't saying this is what this is the way it is, and you have to accept it. You know what I'm saying? Because those people and humans by nature, when you let them get there and they think that they have made the decision. It, they are okay with it. But when you force anything on a person, the first thing that they're going to do is say no. You know what I'm saying? That's just the way that that's human nature. That's just the way that we are. That's how humans are. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. one likes to be lectured. No, mm-hmm. no, nobody. Not you, me, you didn't like it as a kid. You don't like it as an adult. Yeah. Just tell me whatever this thing is about. And then I'll see if I like it or not. And that's it. But don't lecture me. Like, if I don't like it, then what? I'm a bad guy? That's not how that works. You That's know, how it works person. nowadays. That's exactly how they try to make it work. I want to get back to the it. to just entertainment. Entertain me, damn it. I don't care. Like, um, like imagine if Black Panther was made today. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> no. oh, I'm good I, with that. <laughs> that would be a terrible what-if story. Dude, it would be horrible. It would be like just... Uh, it'll be about black power and it would be about shading on white people, left black right. lives matter. It'd it would be, be about black lives matter, it would be about all this stuff. And it would be that Kwanzaa not, book, that's exactly what it would be. Actually, that's, that's would yeah, be. that's pretty accurate, I think, Nick. Yeah, and that's not what that's not what escapism is about. I mean, a lot of these fantasy superhero stories, people want to escape from reality. That's that's the number one thing. And yeah, there's going to be morals. There's going to be like a little bit of a message in these stories. But that should be like the last thing that that that, that's, that should be the least important part of it. Because mm-hmm. the whole to me, like there's these there's these three uh, these three traits that need to be in a good story. I have them written down on my desk or something. It's I think it's it's heart, spectacle and humor. That's it. That's all you need to tell a good story. And um, none. And there's no there's no politics in there. There's no pol- nothing about lectures or nothing like that. It's heart, spectacle, humor. That's it. Tell me a story I can connect with as a human, where I can feel what you feel, whether it be love, death, universal stories. Like to me, that's way more important than left, right who you vote for or, or, or discrimination and things like that. Yeah, that shit sucks. But guess what? I deal with that shit in real life. Why do I want to read it in my comic books? If exactly. I over, if I get pulled over by the police because I have a, because I look like a gangster, I don't want to read about that shit in my comic books. I want to see Wolverine fucking up some Sentinels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it. That's as simple as that. And these people in these, um, most of these are like hipsters, college educated, sheltered suburban type uh creators and they want a virtue signal they want to feel like they're they're making a change in the world a difference but they have no idea they have no idea they're making it worse because it's it's I, i've i've had this little argument with my uncle or well, not my uncle but some people and i'm like dude it's better now than it was before don't even act like it's getting worse because i don't see it 
Like it, it used to be bad. Like I, I, I would go outside and some shit will go down from anybody. It could be just from another, just be from random people. It could be the cops. It could be anything. I feel like that shit has toned down a lot. And how is it that it's toned down in real life, but in in, in entertainment and the movies and comic books are telling us that it's so much worse? Yeah, the, the, that's the that's how you that's how you um, when you can like comic books, movies, these are our modern myths and legends. These are right. our stories. And if you can control those and if you can change those, you can actually go back and rewrite history like they did with um there was this uh, story that was out about how there wasn't enough representation in the movie uh, Dunkirk. Well, the reason why there were no officers that weren't white in the it, at Dunkirk is because in the actual um, battle, all of the armies and the officers that were involved were white. It was fought in Europe. True, there were um, the French had uh, colonial armies that were there, and the British had colonial armies that were there as well. The Dutch did as well. But that's it. They're not going to be officers. But they were like saying, we're going to change what actually happened as factual history to put in rep because representation is more important than what actually happened. Now, when you can control that narrative and you can literally start going back and changing history, that's what they're trying to do. It's a sneaky and cynical way of doing things because they know they can't do it up front to people like we've been talking about because people have gotten used to have seen through that and they're like, no, we're not going to let you do that. But if they can go back and change things, that's how they're trying to go through. Now, I've always said if I were an alien overlord, and I was coming to take over the world, I would not go to war with the human race because you will lose nine times out of the ten, out of 10 because humanity will not stop. But if you can control their entertainment and how they, uh, because people will veg out in front of social media or TV or whatever, because they're looking for that escapism from their normal day lives. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And so if you can control the entertainment, you can control people, and that's how you invade the planet and successfully take it over. You don't fight them. You lull them into a sense of mundaneness until they won't fight you back. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Very well said. I don't mean to uh, – I'm not ignoring the chat. I promise you guys I have actually been uh, tracking you guys' comments. So let's, let's turn to the chat and see what they have to say here. Um, going back a little ways, we got Rot10 Glory. Thank you for joining us, sir. Uh, he says, I've backed Sovereign. I really, I don't really care if books fulfill late so long as they eventually go out. I back them and forget about it. Happy day when it arrives. Sometimes people need to just chill. Hail to that, sir. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel the exact same way. You, you pretty much summed up my state of mind perfectly. I back books. I forget about it. And then when I open the mailbox or there's a knock at my door, and I've got a book. I am ecstatic, and I feel like a little kid again. Yeah. Tell me that no, Comic State right. has not made the mailman showing up exciting again. Oh, like totally. When you, like when you were a kid, like when I I used to get excited when um, I knew that the service merchandise ca uh, catalog was coming, the Sears catalog was coming, and uh, back in the day when Columbia House had the uh, CD club, that was an exciting day as well. You know what I'm saying? So, and CG makes me feel like that. That's what I love. Like I, I look out the window. I know what time my mailman comes or mail person comes. I know the sound of their car. And that's what I look for. I look for that every day because I look for them to put this, you know, that Gemini mailer or whatever in the mailbox that says, I got a comic book. Yeah. yeah that's a well, fantastic I, I appreciate, feeling. I appreciate uh, Glory's comment. And yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Um, I back something. Um, and I just basically, you know, I have faith in the creator that I'll, I'll eventually get the book. Um, I feel like, cause I, I, you know, I've, I've been following, uh, uh, crowdfunding campaigns for a while now before CG, before this whole Indiegogo craziness, like obviously most of it started with Kickstarter. So I was always paying attention to like certain campaigns on, on that side. And, um, there's one campaign called uh skyheart i think is i forgot the guy's name jeff parker or something i don't know but um he's he's known for the inktober hashtag he's known mm -hmm. for starting that um so he had this book called sky skyheart and it was like very rpg based like you know 
a group of characters have to save the world from a wizard, whatever, like RPG style story. And the art was very, um, uh, it, his style is cartoony and there's nothing wrong with that. Love cartoony stuff as long as it's done right and, and proper. And I think he's good. Um, he was really late. Uh, he promised he was going to be on time. He was really late. And uh, again, not, not trying to throw shade, just calling it how I see it. But when, the, when the book is delivered, finally, when the when the when I saw the pages, it looked like these pages could have been done a long time ago. And I don't know the story, but um, when it's certain situations like that where I feel like if you're gonna be late, then I want that book to be, I want it to look nice. You know, if if it's gonna be late, then might as well spend some extra time on it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, if if it's late and then I still get a book that looks like it could have been drawn in 30 days, then I'm a, I'm a, then I'm a little bummed out as like a, a customer back or whatever. I'm like, oh, that sucks. Because um, I was thinking maybe it's late because, you know, you're putting more love into it. But um, when I just see it's late and the art looks kind of the same as whatever, then it's like, oh, this, maybe this person wasn't really working on it. And then they just kind of pooped it out at the end or whatever. Um, so stuff like that bums me out. But in general... I hope that, uh, again, when I back something, I just, I put a lot of faith in the creator and hopefully like, you know, what, what happened with Ethan, you know, he, he was late, but look what we got back. I mean, you, whatever the haters say, they, you can't deny reality. There's a lot of work on those pages. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of work in those pages. Like it, all that line work, all that, uh, the composition, just, it takes time. Like if people that don't draw, I don't I don't care if Doug's book is like done in five days or whatever. It takes time to draw like Ethan. It just does. That's just reality. Get a pencil. All you people who don't like Ethan or whoever, get a pencil, copy an Ethan Van Skyver page to each line. Do each line. Just trace it if you want to. And then trace something much more cartoony or easier and see how fast that is. It's a big difference. And, um, and yeah, and I, and I, and I appreciate the effort that, you know, someone like Ethan put into his books that shows to me that he wants to give us his best work and he wants to put out the best story possible. And I, I so appreciate that even if it was late. Exactly. Exactly. Speaking of that, um, the next comment here, Wilberforce Wooster says, I bought one of the original pages, so please do your best shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're going to, yeah, people who buy original pages, man, they're going to be dope. I'm making sure each each panel is drawn. There's like, okay, so when I used to work for um, Dynamite, IDW, the, the, the publishers in general, um, I literally wouldn't draw like half the page. <laughs> <laughs> I would just do like a lot of copy and pasting. And uh, and they wouldn't, you, they wouldn't know, no one would know, right? It's just a lot of Photoshop, a lot of trickery, a lot of Photoshop, a lot of photoshop and paste because i'm like fuck they need this by tomorrow there's no way i can draw this so i would like just do tricks to make it look like i drew the whole thing um so those original pages i can't sell those because they're blank they're like half blank um but when it comes to sovereign pages everything is drawn i'm even on maybe i do have a letter but i am trying to do as much as hand lettering as possible so oh that's really pages, awesome yeah, so on some pages you're gonna get like letters, full inks, everything. Nice. Yeah, so you're definitely getting your value there, uh, Wilbur Force. Uh, the Ryan Cardinal says, "Yeah, boy, Dreamwave was the shit." Not anymore. Yeah, not anymore. Well, yeah, Dreamwave was good, except for uh, Pat Lee kind of messed it up. But mm -hmm. other than that, yeah, it was, it was good. Uh, the real Steve Dice says, have been rereading Invincible of late. Agreed. Maybe the last great work in mainstream comics. Yeah, I loved Invincible. Um, that was that was good, good storytelling by uh, Robert Kirkman. Um, Ryan Otley's art is obviously outstanding. He is the man uh, when it comes to that shit. Yeah, Invincible was such a good book. I was I was so bummed that it's he prom a long time ago. Kirkman said that was going to be forever. He said he was going to die. Otley was going to die and someone else was going to take over. Like he wanted that book to be his Spider-Man just go on forever. Yeah. And then I don't know what happened. He just like, I'm over it. 
let me just wrap this shit up and that's it and that's what happened and it just fell off at the end so it's a bummer yeah it definitely is um we did have a a good comment here from edwin the ace too that i wanted to address uh he says i can't co-sign that cg in 2020 needs to fulfill their fucking books seeing too many unfulfilled campaigns that i have backed a lot of them haven't even bothered to update their books yeah now i give i give a, a lot of creators a little bit of leeway um when it comes to fulfillment for especially i said this earlier um you know your first campaign out you you might not quite realize what it takes to actually get an entire book done and fulfilled but on second campaigns you need to take that into consideration um you know talk speaking to the creators out there make sure that you've got uh an acceptable date as far as shipping um try to get your book as done as possible before you even launch your campaign um you should try to have the book as complete as possible because yes this this year long plus wait for fulfillment is a super bummer but as i said your first campaign out you don't really know all the hurdles that goes into putting out these indiegogo campaigns um all the new creators that i talk to nowadays i try to tell them don't launch your campaign until you are as finished as possible wait till the you know last minute get that mailing list out there so you can generate buzz and create a backers list but don't actually launch it until you are 100 percent ready to maybe not maybe not 100 percent. we'll say 80 to 90 percent ready to finish that book uh it's going to help in the long run especially with new creators um you know if you go to back a campaign and the fulfillment is three months away two months away that it's going to help you generate a lot more income than if your first camp, your first book is six months to a year out for fulfillment. Um, but these are things that, that we're learning. You know, like you said, Andrew, this this book took is taking you a lot of time. So hopefully on your next campaign, you're going to take that into consideration. And when you set your shipping date, it's going to be a little bit, you know, it's going to be more reasonable. And it doesn't go for everybody. There's campaigns out there that have fulfilled on time. Plenty of them out there. Vinny Art, uh, Vinny Tartamella always fulfills when he says he's going to fulfill. Um, I got Downcast from Clint Stoker, Sweetcast. I got that actually a month earlier than he said it was going to fulfill. So that's good. Um, these are things we're learning. But yeah, in 2020, we definitely need to we need to adjust a little bit and and take that kind of stuff and take the backers into consideration you know the people who are giving you their money their investment um I, and i know this is something even uh even evs has, has stated before you know that uh if you realized if he knew how long cyberfrog was really going to take you know he would have he would have compromised and and done things a little bit different so i'm sure when he ends up launching uh issue two you know, I know he's already, he's already working on it. He's probably got more of issue two done now than he did of issue one when he launched the original campaign. We're all learning. And, yeah, and we're I learning. Don't think, um, yeah, I don't even think he's, I think he started issue one, but I don't even think he got like, I think he, when, I think he did Cyberfrog the campaign and then he started drawing it. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even think he, like, this one is way different. Like, he's already got like, I think 10 pages or something. Yeah, and that's pages. and there are some creators out there that like they're they're doing their books kind of like the way that they're being set up and everything with the campaigns. It's like running paycheck to paycheck. Um, you know, they're um, they're getting one done, and then that money, some of that money is going into the campaign and the new one. They're having to do on art schedules of other artists who are doing it because they're not drawing or whatever like that. And some of those I'll give a little bit of leeway to. Um, especially, and if it's your first, um, it's your, if it's your first campaign, you know, I definitely would give a leeway to, I do like the one thing that, um, a said in there, keep the backers updated. That is, I understand that as from, from a creator's perspective, writing updates can be a complete and total pain. I understand that. And I get that. 
suck it up because we got it. We got to know what's going on because I don't mind if something is really, really late or whatever, as long as I know what's going on, as long as I feel like I'm not, I'm not getting something put over on me. You know what I'm saying? As long as I feel like I'm a part of the process, I'm okay with the process nine times out of 10. Like if you're going to, if you're coming to me like five years from now and saying, you know, we're still like, six months out on sovereign i'll be like we have a problem here. um or something like <laughs> no that way, but, you no. know yeah no, i have i know it, but see this year. but um, yeah but like what oh, yeah i think I, I think i update i hate updating but i think i do it like once a month i think but uh, or i've been doing it once a month but i'm not sure if i updated last this last month but um i just i just personally i know it's an update and i'm this is just me as a backer like Cause it's I'm in a weird spot. I'm a pro and I'm a backer, so I, I know how it feels, you know. Um, so I don't like doing updates where like nothing has happened, where it's like, oh yeah, hey guys, I'm still, you know, I don't want to, can't show anything, whatever, like whatever. Like I've just been like late, like the past month, I've been working on uh, concept art, so I haven't even like for most of the month, I haven't even touched on. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't want to say that. I don't want to show that because. To me, it's like when I update, I want to show something. I want to give you guys something to show, okay, he's, he's making progress on it. But if it's an update, like, oh, I still haven't touched those pages, it's like, fuck. That's how I feel. Right. Um, but you got, but it's like for me, for you coming to me and say, hey, you know what? I do have a real job. I mean, like, I have a, a job that I have to do to support my kids and stuff. So I've been working on that concept art to, like, you know, put food on the table. I'm going to be like, cool. That's fine. You know what? You keep doing what you need to do do that but and then you like come back and say but i have made this one panel that is you know to me as a backer that is enough something yeah that is enough i guess i guess that's just me just being really hard on myself that's just me like fuck this is not worth an update (laughs) yeah i understand and dude trust me i know that updating is a complete pain uh because the last thing you want to do is at the end of a long day sit there and what can sometimes be seen as making excuses um that's the last thing you want to do you want to show that hey look what i did today you know woohoo, we're conquering the world i understand that and i get that but i think that the updating thing is definitely something that um needs to be done more and also um you know i like I sure everybody wants to have that turnover be quick and everything like that, but we've got to be careful that we don't switch CG into a quantity over quality type deal because mm-hmm. you, it, yeah, we are, we are, it, we're on that dividing line when you start uh, demanding books be out faster and faster and faster because yeah. people are going to yeah. start speeding up the processes and stuff like that. Yeah. It's, and there are some people that, that I don't so want to go fun. faster. I want them to go at the speed that they are meant to go at because that's when their art and their storytelling or what are their coloring or their inking or whatever comes through the best. You know what I'm saying? That, that That's actually a good, good subject because I've never really thought about that. I've never thought about CG turning into what the mainstream has become, which is just, just spitting out garbage. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and it's very easy you know, to do. Look, it's, it's very weird. easy to do. Yeah, it's weird because, um, you know, I don't know, man. It's weird. Like comics are weird. Like they're they're expensive now. Uh, I I like if I see a comic book out there that's five bucks, six bucks, and the art, if if I can draw better than you, then that's to me. You're like trying. You're slapping me in the face. It's like. That this this should be like some good shit, some good shit, but it's not. It's it's five bucks for like some someone that shouldn't even be working in the industry. Um, and then we have CG books that are even more expensive. And and in my head, again, we all have different beliefs on what CG is or whatever, what comic books should be. If it's quantity, quality, we're all just different. We all come. We all have our own little philosophies. I, I yeah, like I said, I want Sovereign to be really good. I appreciate when Ethan puts all his lines and all that shit into his book. I don't want something that's half-assed. I don't want something that's drawn by someone else. I don't want something that's. I don't want five pages done in in one day. I don't want that. I know that's not good. I know it's not. I've been in the industry for so long. I've drawn so much stuff. When you draw fast, it doesn't come out good. That's just a fact. No, like I love John Romita Jr. 
but he's so fast he's gotten sloppy like it's just these it's just all this art is like just these editors are like yo we need this shit now and you got you got artists just pooping out like just doing their worst work because they're being rushed and they they can't even they don't even want to buy their own books because they know like they, they have fast it you know what i mean and then to me it's like people are, are are what are we buying here are we just buying just is this just like crack? Is this like this weird thing that I just need a quick high real quick? Let me see what's going on in the next adventure. Or are we trying to make something special here? Like, I, you know, I, I'm trying to do something special, but I, I totally get the whole lateness. Um, I thought I would have finished a, a while ago, but shit came up for, for the next one. I'm for damn sure not going to do what I did this time. I'm going to be like maybe 90% done before I launch the campaign. Like for the next volume, if if I do a next campaign, um, that shit's probably gonna be done as soon as people like it's if once it's funded, it's probably gonna be done. There won't even be updates. <laughs> It'll mm -hmm. just be out. It'll just be like boom, that's it. And that's that's what I would love to do. But that means we won't see a sovereign campaign, for, uh, a sovereign volume two campaign for a while, because I'll just be working on that shit or something. Um, but yeah, yeah, I don't want the same issues, but I definitely, I am not, not going to rush anything. I'm not like there's, there's, there's people on Twitter who are like, where's the book? Hurry up. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> like, I'm not going to rush. I'm not going to rush. It's late. Why am I going to give you just shit now? Just because you want it in your hands? No, like it has to be good. I'm not going to rush it. I'm not. That See, I think the whole purpose of, of CG and spending 25 bucks. If you want a crappy book, then just just stick to the mainstream stuff. See, like, I think most yeah. people, most consumers in CG feel the same way. They, they, they don't they don't care about the weight as long as they get that quality product in hand. There are some. I feel like they just want to. They people are out there, especially on Twitter. They they bitch just to bitch. They they you know they want to cause a ruckus. They want to stir right. the pot. And by the way, I'm talking mostly about anti CG. The and that's the CG, thing. It's like most of these people CG don't even consider themselves CG anymore. The ones that are pitching a fit about all this, you know, most most guys, you know, even in, even in, I don't get to tune into too many of EVS's streams, but when I do, there's always a couple people that are like politely asking, like, "Hey, I'm still waiting on Cyberfrog. How long is it going to be?" Fine. That's, that's that's fine. Okay. That's, that's fine. Good. Yeah. But that's yeah, fine. you've got the antis out there who they. They probably they didn't even back it. Well, yeah, they if back they back the book, I was actually had this thought last night. Sorry to get a little sidetracked here, but no, it's all good. you got these people out there that yes, all they're doing is bitching about they don't have their they don't have their frog book. Where's my fucking frog book? Did you not back any other campaigns? I have a huge stack of books that I've received in the past mm -hmm. year from CG mm -hmm. creators. No, I don't have Cyber Frog yet. I'm still waiting because I was in the ash can tier on the third campaign. That was the only one I was able to back. So yes, I'm still waiting. But I have a slew of other amazing books that I have read and can reread because they're all good. I've only been disappointed by two books so far. Two out of the maybe 30 that I have in hand. And dude, that's a high. Like, let's, okay. They make it seem like CG doesn't deliver, but there's a lot of books that have been uh, fulfilled a lot. And that's a high percentage because mm -hmm. I remember I can name off a bunch of Kickstarter projects from pro like mainstream pros. Richard's yes. face. Still right. haven't done shit. <laughs> Still haven't done shit. Yeah, and there's I'm those like, and, people that have never even filled their campaign from five years ago. Exactly. And it's like like simple shit. Um, and there's... and. And I know the difference. Like, I can tell if something's going to take long or it's not. Like, if this, like, like this guy's work, the one that, that still hasn't fulfilled in five years, I know his work. It's, it's easy. He can do that shit in a week if he wanted to. So there's, there's no excuse for this dude. But then there's another guy I know who's, who hasn't, I think he's three years late. I'm going to just keep no names out of it. But people, you can figure it out. Cool. Um, he draws amazing and he's meticulous and he's slow. So if he's late three years, I kind of give him a break. He doesn't update, which is bad. He should update. He hasn't updated in a long time, but his art is amazing. So again, I know how long it takes to, to, 
to draw like this or whatever. So it's like, I kind of give him a pass, but he needs to update. But other than that, it's like, everybody's different. And, and I'm not going to treat all late campaigns the same. I'm just not. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent there. Um, hail to all the newcomers in the chat. We've, uh, we had quite a big bump here in the last uh, few minutes. So hail to everybody. I know we got uh, Mandy Summers is hanging out. Hail girl says hail Huerta. Hail Nick and hail Adam. Mandy. Hail Mandy. Um, but yeah, uh, Vaz and Kasi, hello. How you doing? Good to see you as always. But yeah, I mean, that's what this whole thing is about, especially CG Jumpstart is about trying to elevate those guys uh, that don't have a lot of projects out there. We're, we, Gat and Steve's big focus was shining that spotlight on these creators uh, that maybe you haven't even heard of before, or maybe they've got one campaign out or they've got a campaign coming out. Um, it's, it's all about pushing this whole movement, all of CG into the future. And if you are a, a new creator or you have aspirations to become a creator, uh, this is something that is definitely going to be up your alley. Uh, because like I said, when we started the stream, not only is it just filled with previews of upcoming campaigns, short stories and serials, interviews, um, that I went too far. <laughs> interviews is what I was trying to uh, come back to there. Um, you know, we, I, I started an interview series highlighting people that have never done campaigns before. Uh, one of those guys is actually in the chat. He's actually going to be my featured interview in the magazine. True comment. Uh, he goes by Flycan on Twitter. He's amazing. Uh, where Flycan? Yeah. You know him? I think I know him. He's like, he draws like, like you. Yeah, dude. If, they, he, if it's the guy I'm talking about, he's he's like been a fan of mine for a while. Like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. he's a cool huge dude. fan. He's a huge fan of yours. Huge fan of yours. Yeah, and he's he his style is very similar to yours as well. Uh, I think, I think you guys would be really good friends if you ever wanted like help on a book uh, or to do like a spinoff. I think he would be the dude uh, that you would want to hit up because he could probably capture that style yeah, very think, very closely. Um, yeah, I remember him. It's been a long time, dude. He's I've I've known him before CG, um, maybe on Instagram. Can't remember where else, but uh, yeah, he's been a very very nice guy, kind guy. Uh, been very very supportive of my work, and and he loves my art style. So I appreciate that, dude. I appreciate all of you guys who who just show me love because um, the industry didn't, and you know I was gonna quit. And because of you guys, I'm not quitting. So, you know, that's cool. Um, but I also want to give them a, a quick message to like guys like Flycan and, and everyone else, uh, all you guys, everyone coming up. This shit is hard. Like, it's hard. Like, who said it? Is it Jack Kirby? I think Jack Kirby. Didn't he say, like, comics will break your heart or something like that? Um, I think so. I think it was true. Kirby who said that. Yeah, it's so true, man. It's fucking hard. I, it may be different now because of the the those guys had to deal with company or like uh, like editors and like they had to di deal with uh, hierarchy, different different structure. CG is a little different, so we're a lot more uh, supportive, and and we're kind of like all in this together. It's a different feel, but um, it's still a lot of work. You still have to prove yourself. Like it's hard, dude. Like I draw this way because I've drawn like every day for the past two, like 30 years. Like it's, it takes time to get good. You gotta just be patient. You gotta stay at it, don't give up. I mean, you could take breaks. I took like a year off or something. Like you can, some, life happens. But just always be at it. Always keep working, keep grinding, keep hustling. You're gonna get good. Cause Joe Mad used to suck. Kirby used to suck. Like uh, Jim Lee used to suck. We all used to suck. And, you know, writers used to suck too. Uh, Miller, Morrison, Alan Moore, you know, they all sucked back then. Um, yeah, you all start at the bottom, man. You don't just you yeah. don't just pick up a pencil or start so typing I, I, on a typewriter and, and you're you you're not just a legend overnight. It does yeah, not happen this, like that. And I'm saying this because you know, some campaigns won't make a like a lot of money or as much money as certain campaigns or whatever. You know, like for instance, I'll use John Malin. John Malin has a, a perfect storm going around him right now. He's got like his uh, his channels popular. 
he's uh he is popular people like his personality people like his art style so he has like a, a, a trifecta effect of why his campaigns do well but he also put in a lot of work you know he draws the way he draws because of the work he put in you know he was working at image back in 2000 like he's he's put in his he's paid his dues and it's finally showing you know the 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 all the shit he's been doing in the past, he's finally getting the love and respect for it. And I guess same with me. You know, I've been in the, the just in there in the trenches, and fucking finally we're getting getting some some love and respect. So all you guys that feel like oh I suck or whatever, that shit's gonna pass. We all suck. Just keep going. That's it. Just keep going. Don't quit. And um, be be positive with each other. Don't turn on each other. None of this backstabbing shit. That doesn't that doesn't work. That, that's not gonna make you money. That's not gonna win you any new friends. It's just it's just poison. So be positive, work hard, and just just lift each other up. And that's it. You know, if a campaign doesn't work, try again next year, two years from now, five years. Just don't give up because you will get better. That's just how it works. Yeah, I think you hit on something pretty important there where it's like paying the dues. You can't one thing that I've noticed that CG does not tolerate is somebody who comes in and thinks that they are entitled to anything. Mm -hmm. The only mm -hmm. thing that you are entitled to in CG is maybe we let you breathe the same air as us. That's it. You are coming yeah. into this. You got to, you got to prove like you're everybody in CG artist, writer, anchor color, whatever you are an unknown quantity. And I'm talking about this as coming from a promoting standpoint. When I go out and I find a book that I like and I get to know the creators and everybody behind it, I have to go out and take these people who no one knows about, or they may have been in the industry for years, but nobody really knew what they were working on. That Unless you're in a very small fan group quadrant or something like that. Like maybe uh, you're the fans of some obscure um a book that was out, but you really know that this person is good. Well, I got to go out and sell that. You know what I'm saying? And everybody's like that in CG. CG is mm -hmm. the free market in probably, I would say, its purest form in the fact that it's the great leveling field. It's where you mm -hmm. separate the wheat from the chaff. If you, you know, but it's like you said, you'll have people who come out and they think that they're because of what they've done in the past or who they know or this, that, the other, that they should automatically make all this money and they only make like a grand they get funded but they they don't make as much as they think they should so they get pissed or whatever or they don't get uh funded the first time and they're just like screw you guys i'm going home that's not how cg works you do that you will not succeed ever in cg you'll get burnt to the ground but if you do like um like mike murphy has done he failed his first time out did he cry complain or anything like that nope he came back and he got funded uh, Pillow Man and Blanket Boy, Real Sean Davis. I will take that book and I will go page for page with anything that comes out of the big two right now. Yeah, no shit. Better. That dude, and he quit drawing for years and then picked it back up because his son had this idea for a book and he wanted to write, he wanted to draw this book uh, with his son. He failed his first time. He picked himself back up. He got funded the next time. Simon Simpotier, same thing. There are countless numbers of people in CG who are successful because they kept their head up. They kept working. They kept getting better. They figured out how to promote their books better. Uh, this, that, or the other. It, it, you are not entitled to anything, though. And I love that you put that, that you've got to be in those trenches. And you've got to earn your respect and your dues, just like in anything else in life. You you don't become a success overnight. you got to work at it. Like, if you want a six-pack... You have to go every day or at least three times a week to the gym. Yeah. You just don't go a couple times and then that's it. It doesn't work that way. Same yeah. with art. Same with the writing. It's a yeah. muscle. We don't have genies. So have we don't have genies in a bottle, man. This ain't snapping your fingers and wiggling your nose. <laughs> this and, is and also, uh, speaking of, of campaigns, you know, making small amounts or whatever. Dude, we let you, you know, you, you, all you up and comers and shit, you new guys, you got it. You got it better than us because I mean, it still, it still happens today, but back then the dream was to what pitch to image pitch to dark horse, whatever, right. Pitch to these companies and you get nothing. You go broke actually making comic books back then. Like look what happened to Donald. He had yeah. his comic book. He pitched it to image. They accepted it. He did it. He made like five bucks out of it. No joke. 
I mean, that's horrible. Imagine working on something for six months and making five dollars out of it. Yeah, that was so. So now people are actually making money, even if it's two G's, five G's. Be thankful you ain't going bankrupt. Mm. You're not going in debt. Because there's horror stories. You'll hear it from all these image people. Oh, like I'm so broke or whatever. Like I lost money doing this. Blah blah blah. Like there's there's sobby stories. Like that's just why I never really like I did pitch for image. I did try to get sovereign through image. They rejected it. But like in hindsight, I'm like, that shit was a blessing. Because yeah, because you probably wouldn't have made near what you're pulling. And I mean, and honestly, yeah, we it's good either. I can guarantee you that they would not have let you spend this kind of time on it and put this well, kind of, uh, effort in, uh, just be, you know, to make it look like this. And this, you know, it wouldn't have sold, it wouldn't have done anything like it has over here because, you know, this is like I said earlier, like it's like Canalis told me, he's like, this is artisanal comics. This is the connoisseurs. We are the biggest comic snobs out there. And there is a lot of truth in that. Mm hmm. Yeah, I would have been homeless if I went through Image. Pretty sure. Yeah, because yeah, even uh, if you would have finished the book on time and you would have it's sold, not a guarantee it would have made money. No, not at all. Not yeah. at all. And they don't, they don't, uh, and they don't promote either. They're just like, okay, we're gonna just worry about the printing and shit, and then we'll see what what it does at the comic shops. Maybe it would have done a couple thousand, and then I would have gotten fuck, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks. And I'm like, and then, but. The traditional creators would be like, but that's how it starts. That's how you pay your dues and shit. No, that's, it shouldn't be that way. Because I would make more money working at McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. Like, why, why am I going to go uh, hungry and, and broke to make a comic book? That makes no fucking sense. Our way makes more sense. You know, we're actually um, get people are actually making some money now. So it's like, that's the way it should be. It shouldn't be this weird image. Uh, boom whatever deal that's going on out there it shouldn't be like that everyone should be compensated you're working they're, they're making money off you so it's like what the hell um but i'm just glad that that's that's changed that ethan guys like ethan john other people are like finally you know getting rid of that myth or that that bad that bad tradition and culture and comic books where like oh you're not supposed to make money you're supposed to struggle and suffer and cry and and do all this so you can get to image in dc i mean uh marvel in dc it's like nah man it shouldn't be that way we should be getting paid every time we work on something and that's what's going on now so yeah it's uh 100 true i uh i've for years and years you know i've wanted to be a comic book writer i can't really draw for shit. i can do some of my own concept art but like i i cannot i cannot put together a comic book like a professional should and it was a dream for years to, you know, be able to write for, for Marvel or DC or even, you know, even image, uh, at the time. And eventually, you know, like I, I, you know, you, you follow all these people on social media and you listen to them just tell horror stories really, uh, mm -hmm. about working in the industry. None of them are happy to be there. And it, you know, in my mind, this is my dream job and I'm having all these people who have my dream job tell me it's not worth it. So I gave up. I was like, well, fine, whatever. I'll just, uh, just be a working stiff for the rest of my life. And then I came across CG and everything changed. Uh, you know, it, it reinvigorated my drive to start writing again. And, and I, and I did, and I have been, I haven't really stopped writing in the last, year and a half because of this and now i know that yeah maybe it might not be a full-time job for me but hopefully sometime before this year be yeah exactly hopefully sometime by the, the end of this year i will have an indiegogo with my name as the campaign leader with my name on the book you know i'm co-writing blood hunt with uh, with sim i'm editor of super harem and cybershock that are out right now so I am actually, I'm already living the dream. I'm already working in the industry that I've wanted to work in for years and years. Uh, so I'm so thankful that, and honestly, I owe it all to Ethan. I really do. Uh, I, I knew just a little bit about CG. Uh, and for whatever reason, I got up there. I was writing articles for an online news blog, basically. And I got up the nerve to send EVS a DM. And say, hey, do you want to do an interview? 
uh, I wanted to talk to him about the uh, the lawsuit with Mark Wade and your boy Zach. And he said, yeah, sure. I'll call you in an hour. And I was like, I had an oh shit moment. I didn't think he would actually answer me, much less say, yeah, hey, I'll call you in an hour. And I hyperventilated a little bit and spent about an hour or so on the phone with him. And he opened my eyes to not only a whole bunch of shit that I, even I wasn't seeing that was going on in the mainstream, uh, but this whole world of comic skate. And I will forever be thankful for that because like I said, it reinvigorated not only my drive to produce comics, but my love of comics themselves. I hadn't bought comics in, I couldn't even tell you how long months, months and months I had given up. I had pretty much stopped going into my you know shop every week. Like I used to, um, I did a, I pick up a issue here or there to, to do an article on it or review it or whatever. But now I, I, I love comics again. I don't love the mainstream. That shit's right. dead to me. I have no interest in it whatsoever, but these comic skate books that I get week after week, month after month, I love them. I love them all. They are so damn amazing. And I want this, this whole movement to continue and just blast the mainstream just out of the water. We already have. We just need more eyes on it. And I think that's what well, CD yeah, Jump Start is going to be good eyes. about. We need more eyes and we need more creators. We need more people. Yeah. We do. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't you worry about that. That is coming. I can tell you that I can tell you that straight up right now that there are of the 30 uh, books that I have on my um, mailing list that are coming out in the next three to four months of that 30, I'll say 25, maybe 20 are new coming out with their first book or their first book in comics gate. There is new blood coming in all the time. I don't understand where these people get this idea that Comics Gate is dead uh, because last last year was Comics Gate's biggest year. More books got funded last year than at any other time. We have more books starting this year than at any other time. Um, so it, it's going to keep going. These these this new blood is coming. It's just at a um, slower and more graduated pace, I think, because uh, you know. When you start, when you have a pond and you have big fish and the little fish come in, you know, they got to make their own space in their own room and they're going to do it their way. Yeah. Um, the, um, but yeah, it, it, that is coming. I, um, and I, I'm not the only promoter who has a list of all these people who are coming. There are others out there who have people that I don't even know about. So, you know, you got to follow, you uh, Find you some promoters on uh, on Twitter, Facebook, wherever you are in social media land. If you are on social media land uh, and in YouTube as well, and just start paying attention to what's going on out there. Um, that's where uh, that's where that is. Uh, I, I got a question. I some um, somebody in the chat. Wait, do you have a, a YouTube? I just posted it. Okay, good. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I do, but I uh, my streaming capabilities right now are very limited. Um, my computer is currently like basically in the living room. So I just <laughs> mine's I just in the kitchen. Can't stream. Yeah, I just can't stream. Like honestly, I, if I, you did are, if you just did videos of yourself drawing and uploaded them as like a time lapse, I think people would really dig the shit out well, of that. Well, yeah, I, I'm gonna start I'm gonna pick up my, the I'm gonna do more drawing videos of Sovereign again and um and I just I just wanna move. I need to get a bigger place so I can um get my own little office and just fucking stream and draw all the time on YouTube. Cause I feel like that's one thing I'm lacking. Everyone's always asking me about my, um, my YouTube and I know people would love to see my process and just, just drawing in general. So, uh, yeah, I want to do that too. So yeah, definitely. Good deal. Yeah. They, um, uh, I love watching you draw. Like I've, I've gone through and watched um, the time lapses of you drawing. And even though it looks like it's fast, I know that I'm, I, I know in my head, I'm like, there's no way he's going this fast with this. Hell and all this <laughs> oh, crazy. Dude, going dude, on if, I could, if I could, if I could draw that fast, Oh God, that'd be so great. I could do like sovereign, like five times a year. Nice. You know, I wish, man, I so wish, I wish I was fast, but there's, you know what? It sucks. Like, like uh there's just there's just a weird thing you know like really good art takes time and it sucks like i hate that i hate it it sucks but that's um, what makes it really good 
yeah, but it's like, damn, you know, it's like, damn, like, I just wish I could draw faster, but then it would look different. So it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's a double edged like, sword, it's a, man. It's a blessing and a curse. Yeah. Uh, let's turn yeah, to the chat for just a little bit here. Um, uh, Rot 10 Glory, he says, CG is so awesome. Can't imagine going back to buying a book where I don't get to engage the creators in this way by YouTube and social media. So much more engaging, adds a whole new layer to it. That is absolutely correct. Yep. CG is the only place where you will get to have fun with your favorite creators. I don't know how many times I have gotten to go out and just troll donald delay to make, <laughs> try to make each other laugh you know what i'm saying how many people get to say or you know go out and um, mess with that or do something like that you know memes and all this other fun stuff and they they interact back with you you can't name anybody else in mainstream comics who will do that because they get so butt hurt they can't handle it because they're yeah. fragile. they are fragile people Streams, um, I feel like streams now or these streams are the basically letter column of comic books. Yeah, I mean it's a twenty four seven con basically, you know. I yeah, mean, it's 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 you know that's one thing that the mainstream doesn't understand either, and some some creators don't understand either. Um, the reason why comic books were fun back then, besides you know the amazing art and stories, you know, um, the creators were engaging. Um, they weren't insulting. They, um, you know, what was, what was really big and got people hyped was like art contests, open submissions. Yes. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like all that shit that if you could let customers or fans engage more, the better. And, and once Marvel and DC closed open submissions, closed art contests, got rid of letter columns, like. They just shut out the fans and now they just they just give you these stories that suck and they have no um no there has there's no uh consequence because everything's rebooted uh nothing matters anymore it just it's just gonna get wiped back to, to normal reset so it's just it's just garbage um if you read that stuff okay cool whatever but i'm sorry it's just garbage but <laughs> <laughs> um it's like the fans have been kind of kicked out of the equation. And I think that's a big reason why people stopped reading comic books because they just didn't feel the love anymore. They didn't feel involved or in the hype. And that's, it's huge, man. Like CG has a way of engage dude, super chats, um, getting on the stream. Ethan did this random stream where he just let people in. Um, yeah. The little like open mic night kind of thing that he yeah, did. Like, that was hey, really cool. Like I'm down to have art contests maybe in the next volume. Um, I, I want to bring back the that engagement. I want to feel like the fans and backers are are involved in all this, and that's what gets people excited. Because reading a story, a good story is cool and all, but if I can interact with like Joe Mad or whatever, I'd be like, oh shit! Like it just adds a new layer to a new new level of excitement, and you just you it's like a it's like a drug. You just get it. You get hooked. And you want to be involved all the time. And that's what's going on with CG. Dude, our haters are our biggest fans. <laughs> there's, there's there's haters that watch every stream. They're like, I watched this stream, five minutes, blah, blah, blah. This is what you said. Like, dude, you're hardcore. You're, you know more about Ethan than I do. Mm -hmm. Like, you're a fan. You say you're a hater, but deep down, you are a fan. Because when I hate something, look, I hate country music. No offense <laughs> to my country people. But I ain't listening to that shit to shit on it. I'm not. <laughs> right, you just don't want nothing to do with it. Yeah. I want nothing to do with it. I, it's it's out of my life. Um, yeah. Oh, and that's a country song. Listening. That's funny. <laughs> these guys are like these guys are looking at every campaign. They are invested. I don't know if I think they're secretly fans, and they just I think they're just salty that they just didn't get what they want what they wanted out of CG. Ding that's, ding ding ding. Yeah. Ding ding yeah. ding. You get you nailed it, you nailed it, brother. Chicken that is one hundred percent true. They did not get what they thought they deserved out of CG. Whether it was, I don't know, uh, fame or you know whatever it might have been. That's it. Could it. be anything. Could yeah, be anything. that like that is it. You know, they didn't get the 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 fifteen minutes of fame or their their time in the spotlight. They they felt they deserved for whatever whatever fucking reason. And they got fucking salty about it. Yeah. And then but they got they are pissed. Fans. It doesn't matter what they say, they love us because oh, they yeah. watch every stream. 
they know who you are they know where you live it's crazy so it's like oh yeah i love all my hate watchers anybody yeah. out there that's hate watching this stream if you thumbs down this stream i love you i do yeah yeah because that's engagement yeah. it is it is it's totally the worst engagement. thing you can let, let, to, if the haters out there if you do want something to fail the most uh productive thing you can do to make that happen is to ignore it you know yep. like these 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 movie stars that just fade into obscurity they just kind of go away that's because people just forgot about them and ignored them and they and they just they just disappeared i mean obviously they're still on earth but they literally no one knows what they are they're not successful anymore they're not rich whatever like they just fell off the earth that's because people just ignored them mm -hmm. and that's how you make things fail if you hate watch if you hate read or whatever if you're watching all the streams you're just adding to the success of all of us you're just you're another viewer that's watching you're um another person that's engaging us on twitter and maybe one of their followers is going to see my art and be like yo this dude can fucking draw his ass off i don't even know what why she hates him but he's a badass artist i'm gonna follow him that shit happens like if you don't engage us then it'll be better it'll be better for you because you want us to go away but every time they interact with us it's just better for us mm -hmm. it really is uh, we got Mortal Thinker in the chat. He says, CG has no problem showing our love and appreciation for the pros as well as new creators wanting to help grow CG. Very well said, sir. Yep, yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, it just disappeared on me. Where'd that go? Uh, ch -ch 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 -oh, going back up. Sorry. Goddamn StreamYard. I had my spot saved for a reason, damn it. Oh, hell. If you, if you guys can, um, on the uh, Sovereign page, go to the updates and uh, put it on the most recent page that I um, did or uploaded. Well, that I know I can do very easily. So let's do that while I try to find the uh, the chat I that think I it's lost. A couple, it might be the next one down or I don't know. I, know it's, I did I know like it's, the Christmas thing. That was nice. Yeah. I think it's that one. Might be. Let's see here. This cover? Not the cover. It's like a page that I up. Uh, it's that ah, page right there. Oh, this oh. One. Okay. Let's do. Uh, let's make this a little bit bigger here. That's not the way. <laughs> that is. Well, it is the way for for this uh, particular streaming service. I, and kudos to doing different colors of font and bubble and dialogue. Yeah, I love that. Each character. I can't stress enough the importance of people who do this because it gives each character their own distinct and individual voice. Yeah. There's one thing that really bugs me. It's the dialogue bubble that looks the same and the font looks the same. I understand that there needs to be a certain level of uniformity to it and stuff, but sometimes you can get, it's like that can't see the forest for the trees. You get lost in it. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I will say this. I, I think my, my, my creative team hates me. <laughs> I, I am like, Man, I am like OCD, dude. I am like this, this, this little rock. You colored wrong or whatever. <laughs> stupid. Like, no one would notice. You're a total but perfectionist. I figured that a while ago in this conversation. Yeah. So I'm just like I'm making sure everything. Like it's so bad. Like my my colorist or whoever. Like when they trend this shit in, um, I feel so bad. I don't even want to bother him anymore. So I'll just do the touch ups myself. <laughs> so. Oh, I just, good. I just, I, I make sure it's all proper the way it's supposed to be. The, the, the font, like my, my, my letterer made a mistake. He accidentally used regular font on the, on the gray on the machines. And I'm like, oh no, it has to be like, remember tech, tech, like, or tech mm -hmm. font, whatever. So he went back in there, added the tech style. And I'm like, awesome. So it's like, you know, it's all these little shit that I have to go back and fix. So yeah, I'm comic books is a lot of work. It's crazy. And if, uh, you if you want to hear a, the sound off of this page that we're looking at right now, you don't need to be here. 
<laughs> Don't chase anybody away. I'm not chasing anybody away. I'm trying to get them to up their game. You need to be able to hear all of that that's going on because, I, I mean, it's so loud I can't even look at it. <laughs> this was the comment that I had bookmarked before the chat jumped away from me. Uh, Israel Garcia says, I backed Sovereign months ago. I'll wait as long as it takes because I know it'll be great. Thank you, Israel. Thank you. Damn right. We got a mortal thinker. He says, man, I really appreciate y'all's insight like this. Thanks for this behind the scenes view y'all offer. But you're welcome, sir. This is why we're here. It's it was a service, for, really. Yeah. It's a total free service. Um, we just, we want, ev we want everybody in CG to be better, uh, as, as creators, we want everybody to succeed because it's the, the rising tide raises all ships, you know, we, and this is something that again, the mainstream doesn't really offer. You've got a couple guys out there that do, you know, YouTube channels and, uh, you know, tutorials on drawing and inking and stuff like that. Um, but we, we want everybody to be, well, like kind of like Nick just said, this good. We want everybody to be as good as Huerta. You should all strive to be like Huerta. Yeah, like I, I appreciate that. Um, again, I put in a lot of hours, so I don't want anyone to think that, oh, I can't. It's impossible. Like well, nothing's impossible. This isn't, this isn't like, like basketball. You know, I just can't dunk. I can't. It's impossible, literally. Like, I'm not built that way. But artists, dude, anyone could be a badass artist. You just got to put in the work. That's it. That's the difference. Just, just put in the work, and you're going to be able to make badass comic books. And I got to ask, who is your colorist on Sovereign? Um, I think he wants to remain anonymous right now. Okay. I'm okay. That's sure. fine. That's, that's yeah, fine. I'm not sure. So uh, I just really wanted to say that he compliments your style so fucking well mm. that it blows my mind because your pages, oh, they all look like an anime. They all look like, like animes look. I mean, God damn, it just works so well together. He, dude, it took me forever to find him. I was like, so when in, in the early pre-production stages of Sovereign, I'm like, I need a colorist. Diamond in the so rough, man. Like, you found the right guy. Yeah, dude. It took forever. And I just got lucky that um, he was available and that we just meshed. We have the same ideas. He even likes, or not likes, he agrees with CG. Like, he's in the mainstream a little bit, but he agrees with CG. So it works out, dude. Like, it's it's all good. So Nice. Yeah, uh, just perfect choice, man. You definitely, uh, you picked well. Uh, we got oh, a dude, question. I couldn't, do it. I, could, I couldn't do it without him. He, he he's literally makes the book. Like he's half he's half the book. To be honest, I'm the lines. He's the colors. He's literally half the book, in my opinion. Yeah, like I said, you you chose perfectly. I think he compliments your style so damn well. Uh, we got a question in the chat from Jason Pertle to you, Mister Huerta. He says, "How many issues of Sovereign do you plan on?" Uh, I wish I I, uh, I have a plan to go on forever. That's a good answer. <laughs> yeah. See, the thing is, like, I have an ending. Like, I'm not trying to, I'm not going to spoil anything. You just have to watch what I say. I have an ending, but it's, it's, um, you know, it can go on for a long time, basically. Yeah. Cause you are, you, if, um, if you're late into the stream, you might want to eventually, once we're done, go back and rewatch the, the beginning of it because Andrew did talk about his plans, uh, for, Essentially, uh, you know, a whole a whole superhero universe that that Sovereign is a part of. So it's definitely uh, we'll, we'll we'll see a lot more of this. And I know, yeah, Andrew it's um, I can go in a little bit about the story. It's like it's like a it's a it's a saga. Obviously, a lot of people say it's a saga, but it's like it's pretty um, extensive. Like, like you know. There's levels to what these guys, what these characters have to do and go through to, you know, complete their their journey or their mission, or whatever. Um, I don't know if it's in the campaign, but uh, you know, like half the planet has been taken over by machines, so they are basically the um, the apex. They're like the 
they're in charge of the planet. You know what I mean? Like they're they're the bosses. They're humans are the minorities, whatever. Like there's just not as many as there used to be. Um, so to imagine trying to defeat a whole army or like I don't know how to explain a giant population of sentinels on steroids, um, that's a big task. Like if the X Men have difficulty fighting a few sentinels imagine a team of here of characters trying to face off an army or like a giant population of these machines and and it's not even just machines there's levels to each machine like the ones you see right now are like level one i'll just say that and wow. they just get they just get crazier like if you think about it like in terminator um they had uh you know, and like in, in all the sequels, they kind of get a little stronger. Mm -hmm. um, but in this, they're like more. These are more advanced than Terminators. They're the technology is way, way in it. This is like the year twenty five hundred. So this is five hundred like uh, years into the future. So if you just think if uh, I forgot what they say, but the scientists say that computers and technology advances every year or it doubles in power every year or something like that. So imagine how strong machines would be 500 years from now. Oh, yeah. Um, so, like, these robots would just be incredibly powerful. And then, again, these guys are level one on this on the page right here. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yeah, and that's when Sovereign's like, fuck. I, if I'm having, like, a little bit of trouble fighting these guys, what the fuck? How am I going to face off the other ones, you know? Or the next, the next stage of, of machines. So that's why it's such a crazy story. You know how they overcome the the odds and just ah, it's just gonna be crazy, dude. You guys, you know, I'm I'm going all out. Like I want it to be just crazy. It's not like a regular superhero story. It's like literally just some crazy epic sci-fi shit. So that's awesome. And again, yeah. you know, if this is what your level one looks like, this is like if going back and using the Terminator analogy, the in the uh, one two third Terminator uh, movie, they actually. Um, go back they go back in time um and it's there when all the missiles go off and you see the early t100s rolling around and then they've got the assembly line with the t uh 800s yep. as well um yep. and then you know you keep seeing you've always got this upgraded version but then you've got like the old ones as well and like seeing how that all uh, comes across and everything but if these are level ones then like i'm and i'm assuming that like in the first book, you know, you'll get up to a level 10 or something like that. Um, then that's crazy. Cause like the big boss, like these end bosses that I've seen in some of the uh, artwork that you've posted on here and stuff. And we've seen on the main page, those dudes are insane. Especially the, oh, gray, the, the gray leader, the big dude. Oh, he's like, you know, he's all you've only seen. You've only seen the gray and the creator. The creator is like God level. Yeah. But but the one, the other great you've seen, that's level one. Like, you've only seen level one. I haven't even shown you, like, I already have ideas for what the other ones look like. But you've, I, haven't, I haven't even teased them. Mm. But until now, you know. That does, I mean, just the, um, I think I actually saw the update of this when it was done in the black, when you were doing the inks on it and stuff. And it, it looked good then. This is even more yeah. amazing. And again, man, kudos on the dialogue bubbles and doing it in different fonts with different colors or something like that. Anything you can do to make the conversation look like it's actually between one thing and another or another person and another person to to show some kind of difference. So you can put a voice to one and put a different voice to another in your head because that really helps with the readability. I know that I would pro I've probably upset some letters out there with my. Uh, th wild crazy theories on stuff like this but from a reader's standpoint especially in a visual medium those things very much help because it's unless like i said before they'll all start running together and it's like when you put too much color on a page or you don't put enough it just doesn't you don't get that same you know what i'm saying it's just like it's it doesn't work yep yeah 100 percent. that was one of the things i loved about um uh chaotic flux is that almost all of the different characters in that book uh, had different colored dialogue bubbles mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, different colored fonts. And it just really made, like you said, all their voices stand out.
Necromancer was the same way. Grim Necromancer Reaper too. Yeah, way. yeah, yeah. Grim Reaper, they did it. You know, and those are the books that you remember a little bit more um, and stand out to you more because they did take that little bit of a uh, little bit of extra quality stuff or a little bit of extra time to realize that, hey, let's do some different fonts and stuff. I mean, like in Necromancer, the dude had his own font and it's old like German font, like that big, thick stuff you see in medieval books and stuff. And then in uh, Grim Reaper, death talks in a hissing type font. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. It's that little stuff like that, or in Cyber Frog, you've got the different font styles between the ship and then Salamandroid yep. and then Cyber Frog and Heather. You know, all this stuff is just that stuff really does help. I mean, and I again, though, I can understand that sometimes that doesn't always work because the font doesn't really match some other stuff or it just doesn't work out or it'll take too long or this, that, or the other. But if you can do it, I highly recommend that you do it because it just makes everything go off so much easier. Yeah. Now I do. I did want to ask here. Um, is this one of those uh, examples of, you said, you know, you did some of the, your own lettering like this one yeah. here at the bottom. Yeah. 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 That's, that's on the page. That skull dial, that skull bubble. That's on yeah. The page. That's awesome. And also the lettering on the floor on the first panel is on the page too. The, they see the, the 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 long panel the the vertical panel. oh yeah okay yeah that lettering I think it says boom or or I forgot what it says but um that shit's on the page too oh yeah man and that's that's one of those things that it translates so well into the you know into the final product when you've got the lettering worked into the art and you don't see a lot of that either Do you know, you usually it's it's just you know the kind of not even really generic, but just you, you can tell it's plastered on there. Rob Willis does right. a lot of his own um, sound effect lettering as well. Uh, we looked at him and Matt Fowler's project, uh, Red Giant Battle, mm -hmm. uh, a couple episodes ago. And he showed some examples where he does his own sound effects letterings. And it just it stands out. And again, that's one of those things that makes CG stand out, you know, between yeah, you and the rest of the pack. Yeah, it's an old comic thing that's it's gone extinct. It's been forgotten. And I want to just bring back that shit. Just bring back the comic bookness of comic books. Um, and that's hand lettering and shit like that. So it just it just you know, it's a it's a there's a special look and feel to comic books and they just don't feel like comic books anymore. So I'm just trying to again, I'm I'm just trying to capture that feeling. I want to give the, those that hype and those feelings to the next generation of readers to the kids whatever so they can fall in love and we can just keep this shit going because if if things go the way they go then this this marvel and dc this industry is this is it there's no there's there's no next era of fans or readers whatever there's no next generation yeah and that's the most important part is we need to we need to bring in that next generation we need to make our kids excited about comic books and yeah, like, dude my son is like he loves Sovereign. He's like, when are you going to make statues? And he's asking all these crazy questions. <laughs> a movie. I'm like, dude, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. It's like, when do I get my Sovereign action figure, Dad? Yeah, it's crazy. He's like, can't Sovereign beat up Goku? And I'm like, Ooh. fuck, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> um, and then he's like, I don't, because all Goku's all, all crazy now. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm like, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Like, I don't know. See, he needs, yeah, you need to get him a sovereign action figure so he can take yeah. his sovereign action figure and his Goku action figure and have his own little crossover. That's right, man. So that's that's what it is. It's cool, man. It's it's interesting. I, I love it, but yeah, CG's good. CG's good for everybody. Yeah, damn right it is. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. This has been an amazing yeah. chat. Um, I, I appreciate I, it, man. It's been fun. Uh, I love all you guys. Seriously, like, we're all in this shit together. If you're a backer. If you're just a watcher, whatever, man, like it's all part of it. You're all part of the movement, part of the the um, the process and trying to not even trying to save comic books, but just trying to keep keep making comic books and good ones. And uh, we just I, I appreciate all you guys. So. We all want to keep comic. We're all here because we want to keep comics alive, whether we're reading yep. them or, you know, we're backing them yep. or if we're just, uh, you know, or if you're making them. We want to no matter, this like, movement to continue. Yeah, because like it. 
it's not even so much an, an industry. Like if the industry dies and if CG still goes, there's still comic books. Like comic books still exist. And our comic books are still comic books. So it's like, that's what it is, man. It's just, we're just trying to keep comics alive. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, before we do head out of here, uh, I want to bring up one more time. Uh, we've got the GoFundMe for, uh, let's switch this over, for the, for the Grim Reaper team. Uh, please, if you haven't already, share this link out or donate if you can. These guys are in dire straits. And like Huerta just said, we're here to help each other. We want to see everybody succeed. These guys have succeeded, but unfortunately they have hit a huge road bump in, you know, the terms of just life in general. Um, so please check it out. Um, I'm going to post a link here in the chat. That's the GoFundMe page. Like I said, share it out. If you can donate, please do. Um, we just started, Nick just started this this morning. It's already at 740 bucks out of our thousand dollar goal. So we're kicking ass. Um, thank you to everybody who has already donated. You guys are amazing. This is what this movement is about. Um, definitely. If you haven't backed sovereign already do so, please. Um, honestly, look guys, if honestly, um, sovereign has been funded, I'm good. If you have money, you want to help out, definitely help out the, uh, the grim reaper that with the grim reaper team. Yeah, that's the Grim Reaper team. Um, yeah, like if those people that you know their their house is gone, all that. Did you see the pictures? Their stuff is burnt up. Like, obviously, that's that's that sucks. So they definitely need your help. And I'm good. I mean, um, if you maybe I don't know, but I, I would appreciate the support. But definitely try to show some love to them because they need it more than I do. So that's very big of you, man. That's mm -hmm. that that means a lot. You know, saying that you know you're. I yeah. wish I was like Ethan and baller enough to just hey donate to them and I'll give you a copy. But right now I can't do that. <laughs> but uh, no, that's that's our that's all right. That's all right. Um, yeah, hail to everybody in the chat. Uh, you guys have been awesome tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, like I said before, make sure you're subscribed. You got the bell rung for notifications. I think I'm shadow banned right now, so you might not get notifications. Uh, but that only lasts so long. We'll get over that. Just a minor bump in the road. Definitely help out the Grim Reaper team. Um, the nicest people in the world. It really sucks that this happened to you. This is my biggest nightmare, honestly. Uh, all my shit burning up in an awful fire. Luckily, they made it out with their lives unscathed, but they have nothing but the clothes on their back and their phones. So please help them out. This will at least help them buy some groceries, um, you know, toothbrushes, the little shit that we take for granted. So please, please. Consider throwing them five, 10, 20 bucks, whatever. Um, you know, skip out on McDonald's and give them the five bucks instead. <laughs> Nick, do you have anything to add? Um, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, reiterate everything Adam just said. Um, they've literally, they've lost everything. I mean, they have nothing. And so if you can help them out, um, you know, five, ten dollars, whatever. Just like Adam said, you know, if you can't share the link, don't feel bad if you can't, man, because we all understand that, you know, we just got through with the holidays and this is just like the worst time that this could possibly happen. And this is just, you know, that's how it goes. Um, also, um, I, I do this one time and this one time only I will do this. I promise you. Uh, but Sunday on my uh, Sunday afternoon show, Sunday conversations, we are having the uh, writer and creator of orgasm girl on and i want to go ahead and start pitching that right now uh dan fan um is her is her na twitter name or is trish um everybody if you could show up see that this book is going to be really really funny and it's going to be really good and i'm a big fan of it so yeah yeah i'm gonna have to tune into that one because uh i keep saying that and i keep missing your shows because they're on sunday afternoon but i do want to hear more about this book uh because it it's seems very unique and like you said it's got a really funny flair to it uh, so let's uh i think yeah there we go make sure i've got the correct link here this is tinfoil hat nick's channel drop that in the chat make sure you're subscribed over there as well 
uh, for that. We'll be back next Tuesday for another episode of CG Jumpstart Between the Panels. And you can always catch us, me and Nick, Saturday morning for the weekend woke up show this Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Until then, I hope you all stay safe out there. I love you all. Hail and good night. Good night, everybody. Peace.